Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord. Welcome to the week four MVP video. And a big congratulations to week three's overall server MVP, Driftblim, whose fake unburden boost earned it the bluff emoji in our server. Congratulations, Driftblim. And please, everybody, before we get into this week's nominees, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Thanks so much. As always, we'll be starting in the Peach League, but we have something a little bit different today, and that is we are just going to hop right in at turn one, and we're going to watch the entire battle here. So let's see how Vine Beast, the Zerud, uh, manages to defeat this team and earn its spot as the first nominee for Peach League. It is immune to Thunder Wave because Dark types are immune to moves from the Prankster ability, so it gets a free bulk up right away. And you'll see it has a clear amulet to prevent the stat drop from the Intimidate Crocodile. It goes for a Terra Poison and gets its clear amulet knocked off, and goes for its own knockoff in return, knocking Roserade to its Sash. Now, because of that Terra Poison, the uh, Dazzling Gleam doesn't do too much, and it claims its first kill. Slowking doesn't stand a chance against a plus three super effective stab knockoff. It kind of shrugs off a Draco Meteor here and gets its third kill with a knockoff. Crocodile comes back and this time does get the Intimidate, but that allows it to go for a huge Drain Punch and get a lot of that health back. And it looks like Crocodile might not be rocking Earthquake, otherwise it could do some super effective damage here. But it takes this opportunity to get up one more bulk up and another one before Ho-Oh comes in. And Ho-Oh has the Will-O-Wisp to have its attack stat but it takes a huge knockoff hit anyways, knocking off its heavy duty boots. Then it goes back out here and it reveals jungle healing to get rid of the burn and heal up some of that HP. Knockoff is easily able to break that substitute and reveals no item. Again, because it's poison type, the fairy move isn't doing too much. A drain punch into the Ho-Oh is doing 35%. And it takes a Sacred Fire, does not get the burn, and that means Ho-Oh does go down. Intimidate, once again, lowers its attack, but knockoff is still enough to get the kill. Off Choice Specs, that's an interesting choice. And Drain Punch is enough to finish it off. So, after never switching out and never relying on any of the other five Pokémon on its team, Zarude is able to get the clean 6-0 sweep. What a way to start. In the Beauty League, we have a really similar attempt. We're actually starting again on turn one with our nominee Gouging Fire, and it's going to put in some significant work right away. Let's watch. And immediately, we see the same tech with the clear amulet blocking the Intimidate drop. At plus one, a Flare Blitz is able to take out the Landorus from full. Then comes Bastiodon on a Balloon, which is a really good answer, but it's packing Double Kick. What an awesome answer to Bastiodon. It does most of its health there. A crit body press does 34%, but he crits right back with a flare blitz to take it out. Then comes this in here to click Terra Water, and a crit Dragon Claw takes this out as well. That's three kills. Then the S tier comes in. That's not living a Dragon Claw. That is four kills. And then a Mega Hound Doom is in fact just barely able to live a double kick and get the revenge kill. So Gouging Fire's sweep is stopped a little bit short, but in just seven turns, it is able to pick up four kills and all but ensure the victory and almost a fifth kill as well. Really good effort there by Gouging Fire. Next up, we're in the Brain League. And as you can see, it is Genesect, who has just taken some Rocks Chip um, and a Bayonet who is at 23% and burned, and it'll be actually lower after the rock. So it's pretty much Genesect versus three. And let's see how this plays out. It does get the special attack boost and picks up its first kill with an E-Speed, very nice. Then the paralyzed Corviknight comes in, takes some rock damage, and there's a shift gear. And some paralyzed hacks right there, gets a little bit lucky. Goes for that Techno Blast doing 75% and that Brave Bird Recoil almost takes down the Corviknight, but a second Technoblast will do it. And now it is just the Great Tusk left. 
and Technoblast is able to take it out, and that is a clean endgame there for the Genesect. Nicely done. Okay, here we are in Muscle League, and there is a lot to break down, so let me start. What we have over here is one of the biggest threats in the S tier, which is Ogre Pond H, at a plus one speed boost after using Trailblaze. However, it's not quite as scary as it would normally be, because Miss Magius earlier used Terra Fairy, it cannot go for the Terra Fire to get the attack boost and deal extra damage with its uh, IV Cudgels. However, over here, Zora has at about half health, a little bit less, and there's rocks up. And the Toxapex will be at just about full health after the Regenerator. On this side, we have our MVP nominee, Ogre Pond, and we have Zorark H. And actually, this is Zorark. Uh, it doesn't look like it yet, but we know that because the actual Ogre Pond has already used Terra Grass. And so we don't see Terra Grass here, so this must be the Zorark but Zorark earlier in the match revealed it's a choice scarf. So what we have is a speed tie here because both of them have the same base speed and they both have a plus one speed boost between the scarf and the trailblaze boost. So we've got one round of speed ties here and then if it comes to it, the Ogre Pond when it comes in, it will also have a plus one speed boost because of its ability and using Terra and again, the same base speed, so we would in that case have a second speed tie. So really anything can happen here. I actually got to watch this game live. It's a crazy finish. You guys are in for a treat. Let's let it play. So the Zorark wins the speed tie and gets the poison cheat, but there's a crit on the Ivy Cudgel, which allows it to take it out from full. So a lot of cheating all the way around. And here comes Ogre Pond. Here is the pivotal turn of the game. If the Ogre Pond H wins the speed tie, and Ivy Cudgel is sure to take it out. But if the Ogre Pond Teal wins the speed tie, it'll definitely finish it from 18%, and then it'll be a tough finish from there with two scary mons left. So let's see. And the Ogre Pond Teal wins the speed tie and gets a crit. Now in comes the Toxapec, and it goes for Baneful Bunker. This is like Protect, but if a move makes contact with it, it will also poison them. And so this is a really good play here, getting off that Baneful Bunker, but unfortunately, Ivy Cudgel does not make contact, so there is no poison. The next Ivy Cudgel does 55%, allowing it to uh, just barely live, and Haze resets the speed boost. This is huge, because Ogre Pong can't switch out, there's no one left to switch out to, and so it will now be outsped by the Zora here. And so... Let's see what happens. And he makes an interesting play here, doubling out, wanting to get that regenerator recovery back for Toxapex. But this means that Zora is just gonna go down to an IV Cudgel, which is unfortunate because it would have outsped and possibly been able to Oko. Toxapex comes in and after the rocks gets Oko'd by an IV Cudgel. And that is the game. Crazy finish. I mean, this was one of the more wild matches to watch live. So I'm really glad it was nominated. Great game. Now, moving up a bracket into the Stellar League, we have a real treat for you today. It is the Lapras here. And watch how it deals with the Alamomola here, one of the bulkiest pivots and wish passers in Draft to Rig format. Uh, it goes for a U-turn straight into our buddy Lapras. And watch what happens here. Takes a knockoff, no big deal, loses its leftovers. And it goes for a Whirlpool to trap it in here. And the flip turn, it's immune to because of its water absorbability. So now it's trapped for a Parish Song, and it will be dead in three turns. And so we just wait here. But Lapras has a surprise. Freeze Dry, which catches a crit. Scald is just going to heal Lapras further, and it dies to the Whirlpool. So that is one kill for Lapras already. Now we jump ahead a little bit here to turn 23, and Lapras's team is looking pretty good. They're up 6-3 here, although this is really dangerous because the Iron Bundle can, has already shown Freeze Dry, which is quadruple effective against Palkia here. So what do you think they're going to do? Well, obviously they're going to switch into Lapras here, which will be neutral damage, and Lapras just eats that Freeze Dry, goes for a Whirlpool, catching the Torn from full HP. Torn gets the Defog off as Lapras goes for a Freeze Dry doing 56% and the Whirlpool gets it down to 
The annoying thing about Tornadus, though, is it has Regenerator and U-Turn. So even though it's trapped in by Whirlpool, a U-Turn will still get it out and allow it to regenerate all that health back, all that hard work that Lapras just did. That is, unless it has Protect, and it stops the U-Turn, forcing it to die to the Whirlpool, and that is two kills for our friend Lapras here. And just a few turns later, Lapras is back in against the Iron Bundle, and I'm just going to let it run here to the end of the battle. It goes for a U-Turn, which Lapras wasn't expecting, actually. It thought it might have a flip turn, which it would be immune to, but it still gets the Whirlpool damage off, and it stacks with Protect to get another chunk of Whirlpool damage, so a little bit of chip here, but it needs to get out of there because it doesn't want to take a Drain Punch and let it heal all the way back up, so unfortunately, it's not able to confirm that kill. So he goes up, gets up its spikes. There's not much the goalkeeper can do here. And goes for a flip turn into Swampert, which takes the Supercell Slam and makes it crash, killing itself. And then all that's left is a Mon that's completely walled by the Lapras here. It eats a Freeze Dry again. Goes for the Terra Ice to make it resist Freeze Dry and so that this will do extra damage. And Lapras closes out the game with a third kill. Great performance here from Lapras. Really fun one to watch. In Victory League, I am proud to announce the return of the Belly Bolt, Dynamo here, who has already clicked Terra Flying earlier in the match. This uh, Battle Bond Greninja has been just raining tear on Belly Bolt's team. Thankfully, it's toxic and one turn away from dying to toxic. Um, but also, there's a full health Marshadow, a Moltres that's already been an MVP nominee, uh, an Ursaring that's at 68%, and a beat up Alolan Muck left versus just Belly Bolt and Depult. So I'm just going to let this play out because this is kind of incredible. Catch the crit Dark Pulse, really bad luck right away. And the first thing we see is that its ability lets it get a charge boost every time it's hit by an attack. That means the next electric attack it'll go for once it's charged does bonus damage. And so it goes for a slack off and it dies off to a toxic. So now Belly Bolt's about where it started. It eats a body slam, no paralyze, and goes for a slack off there, just gaining some health. We're gonna do it again, still no Paralyze, and the Discharge does 40% thanks to that Charge Boost. Now it goes for a Rest, and this I want to point out is a really cool set. Uh, Ursaring has Guts, so any attacks it goes for with Rest Talk will be Guts boosted and do extra damage. Now it has Earthquake, Body Slam, and spoiler alert, the next move is Sleep Talk. So we're going to see how this goes here. It Sleep Talks an Earthquake, which Terra Flying is immune to, and Belly Bolt reveals the Soak, making Ursaring Water type, which does a couple things. One, it removes the stab boost from Body Slam, which is huge. And two, it makes it super effective when it uses electric attacks into it. So, here we go. Sleep Talk, another Earthquake, which it's still immune to. Discharge is doing great damage now because of the super effective boost. Wakes up, goes for that Body Slam. Still no Paralyze, but a Charge Boost is enough to kill it after it's Water Typing. Muck comes in, Belly Bolt gets off a Slack Off, and eats a Poison Jab, but no Poison. And the Discharge takes it out from there with that Charge Boost. Moltres comes in, and Belly Bolt gets out of there as Moltres goes for Terra Ground. Flamethrower does about 25% to Depolt, and Depolt Draco's into the Marshadow, nearly knocking it out, but Marshadow has Shadow Sneak to finish it off. So now it's Belly Bolt in a 1v2 situation, has super effective Ice Punch, no Freeze luckily, as it goes for a Slack Off. And another, no Freeze! It gets another Slack Off, and so they're doing some calculations here, seeing how much health it needs left to live an attack from Moltres. It finally takes out the Marshadow, Moltres comes in, Goes for the flamethrower and it does just enough. Their calculations were perfect. And it can just slack off and get all that health back here. Goes for the soak, which does not work into a mon that's used Terra. You cannot change its typing with attacks like soak. It's got the toxic though. And oh, oh no, it was so close. It just didn't know about the soak tech. What a crazy finish. 
This was the first match of Draft Rig Happy Hour, which happens every Friday, which you should all check out. Crazy match, great game, Belly Bolt, even in a loss, was the MVP nominee for the excellent amount of work it put in there. Really good job. And finally, we have a banger for you today in Premier League. The Premier League nominee today is Togekiss, and this here is a matchup of the two most recent Premier League winners, and both players have brought a lot of heat and really creative sets, so I hope you enjoy it, because it's painful for me to watch back as I'm on the receiving end of this Togekiss set. So, it's going to first hit the field here to eat a Draco Meteor here from the S+, and it's going to click the dual wing beat. Now, unfortunately, it misses here, but this tells us a lot of things. One, it's a physical Togekiss. And two, it's running Hustle. So it's going to have Hustle boosted physical attacks. It just has to land them. Let's see if it does any better later in the match in landing those attacks. All right, jumping ahead a bit, uh, Togekiss's team is up one. However, Giratina is in a really scary position. It's got a plus two attack boost and two turns of Tailwind remaining. So it's gonna click Outrage and pick up a kill here, evening the score. It's almost dead to Toxic, and Togekiss comes in and is just immune to the Outrage, able to deal with the Giratina. It hits a play rough, but that doesn't matter, the Toxic would have killed it, and reveals that it is Life Orb. And there goes the Tailwind. Now we're gonna hop back in to see how Togekiss finishes up the game for Alex's team. And here we are in the end game. It's tied up 3-3, three to three, and there's one turn of Trick Room left. Corbomidal has gotten kills on back-to-back -back turns with Drain Punch and Ice Hammer. And another Ice Hammer here would be enough to take out the Togekiss. But Togekiss has a trick up its sleeve. It's going to go for Terra Fairy, losing its flying typing, and hopefully that will be enough to allow it to live the Ice Hammer. Let's find out. There's a Terra Fairy, and it misses the Ice Hammer! But Hustle makes it miss the dual wing beat. And this seems like not a big deal at first, but then you realize that was the final turn of Trick Room. And now Togekiss is going to be able to outspeed the crab, take some toxic damage, and it connects on this dual wing beat, picking up another kill. And there's the Life Orb chip. In comes Azu, and this play rough is going to do 90% because it is Terra Stab. Hustle boosted and Life Orb boosted, but Azu gets off an attract here, so now Togekiss not only has to land his attack through Hustle, but also through Infatuation, which gives it a 50% chance to not want to attack the Azu here. Let's see if it can connect. And it breaks through and lands its dual wing beat to pick up another kill. And finally, there is the Talon Flame, which goes for a Swords Dance. And the dual wing beat not only lands, but avoids two chances at the flame body burn, which would have cut its attack in half for future turns. Now, the Talon Flame, I happen to know, has Roost and could possibly stall out this Togekiss if it just starts to miss some of its dual wing beats here or if it gets a flame burn. So let's see how it happens. But there's a surprise extreme speed, it connects. And that is how Togekiss ended out the game. Crazy end game, great set, awesome bring from Alex. And that is our final nominee for this week's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed all of these sets. This was a crazy video, so many deserving MVP nominees this week. Please make sure you vote down below for your top two, and we will see who is week four's overall server MVP and what emoji gets made next week. As always guys, please leave the video a like. This has been Gene, and I'll see you next time.